Hello, hello, and how are you, my friends? I'm Peter, and here I'm telling you stories about the most interesting European cars of the 80s and 90s. Today we are talking about a car with a rather weird history. It was produced between 1992 and 1995, but it was also the same car that was built from 1962 to 1980, except for the fact that probably it wasn't. So, today we are talking about MG RV8, also known as Rover RV8. Ok, to understand why this car appeared at all, we need to take a look at the historical context. In 1989 the first generation of Mazda MX-5 Miata was introduced, and it had a huge success everywhere, including Great Britain. And the Rover Group, the main true British car manufacturer of the time, decided that they should give a true British answer to this Japanese invasion. Well, the whole history of the British automotive industry of the 70s, 80s and 90s is the story of pride, prejudice and bad decision making. And this time wasn't any different. Rover guys probably thought, hey, we already had a car that was a legendary small roadster of the 70s, MG MGB. Let's just update it a little and start making it again to get the market back from this Mazda. And so they did. And spoiler alert, it was a massive failure. A fun fact, by the way, is that the whole Miata project was inspired by British sports rosters of the 70s, and in the first instance by the same MG MGB. So now we need to travel back in time and briefly take a look at what the original MG MGB was. The development of MG MGB started in 1958. The body design was rather progressive, but technically many parts such as brakes and suspension had origin from the mid-50s and even the later 40s. The small and light two-seater Roadster was sold for 18 years from 1962 to 1980 and was very successful with over 500,000 cars sold making the MGB the best-selling sports car in history before arriving of Mazda Miata. By the way, a lot of original MGBs were exported to the United States, and you still can buy them here for relatively small money. Later, MG introduced the three-door hatchback GT version of the same car, and versions with straight-six engines known as MGC, and with V8 engine known as MGB GT V8. Despite rather good sales even in 1980, British Leyland, that's how it was called before renaming to the Rover Group, decided to stop production to help boost the sales of another British Leyland sports car, a very bizarre Triumph TR7. But it didn't work, remember what I said about the bad decision making. Anyway, 10 years later, when Mazda Miata arrived, British Leyland, now called Rover Group, recognized their mistake and decided to revive the MG MGB and skim the cream of the rapidly growing roadster market with the new MG RV8. But they couldn't just bring it back to the production line. The safety regulations changed and the car itself was outdated. Don't forget, it was the 60s car developed in the 50s, almost 40 years before. So they decided to update the car a little, and this a little led to almost full redesigning and re-engineering of the whole car. And when the production started, the car was almost a completely new car on the old platform. It is claimed that only 5% of spare parts of the RV8 were interchangeable with the MGB. So it would be a mistake to say that MG RV8 is just a revival of the old MGB like some car historians disdainfully say. No, Rover actually built a new car with the inspiration and some parts of the classic MG MGB. Of course this update came with the price. To speed up the process, Rover had to borrow some parts, many of them, from other manufacturers such as Bentley and Porsche. And the whole redesigning and production process was such expensive, that when it transformed into the final sale price of the car, it came out as almost twice the price of the Mazda Miata. Obviously, this led to the instant failure of the initial idea to attract some Mazda customers. With this high price, the MG RV8 played on the field of premium cars with Porsche, Audi, BMW and Mercedes-Benz. And on this field, a car based on the platform designed in the 50s didn't have many advantages, honestly speaking. Don't get me wrong, the RV was a fast car, oh damn fast, 
Only one engine was offered, but it was the 3.9 liter aluminum Rover V8 engine with 190 horsepower. It was more than enough for such a small and lightweight car. So, on a straight road, it could be a really funny little monster who could make 0 to 60 miles per hour in 5.9 seconds. Very decent. But it still had the rear suspension with leaf springs and rear drum brakes, with the best regards from the 50s. So the handling on the curvy road was, to put it kindly, very challenging. The RV8 had a decent trunk space, but almost all of it was filled with a spare wheel. It had a good engine, but no safety features like airbags or ABS. Yes, the car was a real piece of British luxury. It was hand-built, it was upholstered with luxury quality leather and decorated with a real elm woodwork. But it was expensive and technically outdated. The problem was that for the same price there were a lot of options on the UK market at that time, including TVR and Porsche, which provided an even greater driving experience with many modern options. No surprise that the RV8 failed. Only 1,983 cars were produced in 3 years, among them only 330 were sold in the United Kingdom. But surprisingly, the car had rather good sales in Japan. Rover decided to show the car at the Tokyo Motor Show in the heart of Mazda's motherland, and it was met very warmly by Japanese customers. Of course, it wasn't like tens of thousands sold. But 1,579, almost 80% of all RV8s ever made, were sold to Japan. An interesting thing is that about 700 cars were later re-imported back to the United Kingdom. Japanese versions, by the way, had a funny feature with a mechanical lady voice telling you in Japanese what function you are using after you press the button on the dashboard. Also, some cars sold in Japan had the air conditioning, which was never an option in the UK. Now Rover MG RV8 is becoming a really interesting car for a car collector, because of its history and the very limited number of cars built. Obviously, the RV8 was never imported to the United States at the time of its production, because of certification requirements. But all of them are older than 25 years now, and this means that you can legally import them to the United States. And I have great news! They are available on the market and the current prices are not insanely expensive. Also, most of the cars have rather low mileage, because they were never made to be a daily driver. You can now buy the RV8 in the UK for 20-25 thousand British pounds. In continental Europe you can find a good RV8 for 20-35 thousand euros and a car in perfect condition with low miles for 45-55 thousand euros. And if you are thinking about of buying of them ever, there is no reason to wait, because these cars will only get more and more rare, and therefore more and more expensive. Of course, there may be a lot of much better offers if you have good connections in the European car enthusiast community. And by the way, I can help you with this. We can help you to find a car, ship it to the United States, and help you to import it properly and to deal with all legal paperwork. We have a network of partners in Europe who can find cars that are not listed on the internet, inspect them properly, negotiate the price, purchase the car, and organize shipping and everything else. This is not only for Rover or MG, of course. We can find virtually any 80s, 90s or 70s car in Europe for you and bring it to the United States. And if you are watching this video from any other country, we can find a cool American car for you in the US and ship it to your country. The link to our website with all details is in the description below. Well, thank you very much for watching. So, what are your thoughts about MG RV8? Would you like to drive it? Or maybe you already were happy to drive one? Tell me please in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give me thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you so much my friends, and see you next time.